In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Grace, mercy, and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, Jesus Christ, to save us from our sins, to be our advocates in heaven, and to bring us to eternal life. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, then we resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us, forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.
collect for the first Sunday after Trinity. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers, and because through the weakness of our mortal nature we can do no good thing without you, grant us the help of your grace, that in the keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. A reading from the book of Genesis. The Lord appeared to Abraham by the oaks of Mamre as he sat at the entrance of his tent in the heat of the day. He looked up and saw three men standing near him. When he saw them, he ran from the tent entrance to meet them and bowed down to the ground. He said, my Lord, if I find favor with you, do not pass by your servant. Let a little water be brought and wash your feet and rest yourselves under the tree. Let me bring a little bread that you may refresh yourselves. And after that, you may pass on since you have come to your servant. So they said, do as you have said. And Abraham hastened into the tent to Sarah and said, make ready quickly three measures of choice flour knead it and make cakes. Abraham ran to the herd and took a calf tender and good and gave it to the servant who hastened to prepare it. Then he took curds and milk and the calf that he had prepared and set it before them and he stood by them under the tree while they ate. They said to him, where is your wife Sarah? And he said, there in the tent. Then one said, I will surely return to you in due season and your wife Sarah shall have a son. And Sarah was listening at the tent entrance behind him. Now Abraham and Sarah were old, advanced in age. It had ceased to be with Sarah after the manner, manner of women. So Sarah laughed to herself saying, after I have grown old and my husband is old, shall I have pleasure? The Lord said to Abraham, why did Sarah laugh and say, shall I indeed bear a child now that I am old? Is anything too wonderful for the Lord? At the set time, I will return to you in due season and Sarah shall have a son. But Sarah denied saying, I did not laugh, for she was afraid. He said, oh yes, you did laugh. This is the word of the Lord. A reading from Paul's letter to the Romans. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us, because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time, Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person. Though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Matthew. Then Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like a sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the labourers are few. Therefore ask the Lord of the harvest to send out labourers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his twelve disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out, and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus, and Thaddeus, Simon the, Can the, the Canaanian, and Judas Iscariot, Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles, and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. This is the Gospel of the Lord. May I speak in the name of God, Father, Son and Holy Spirit. Amen. Covid-19 has impacted all of our lives and will never be the same again. Most of us have questions, um, anxieties, fears about what it will mean. Many of us are afraid to come out of isolation and rejoin social contact again because of what that might mean, the danger that might be for us physically. And then there are questions about the tensions involved, um, tensions between physical and mental health. And what's most important, how do we balance those things? The tension between um, the, the need to restart our economy and our society and between that and, and, and the danger that the disease uh, still poses. And then for all of us, I think there are questions and probably anxieties about about the change the changes that it might mean what will happen with our lives um, as individuals as families as communities as a church community what will it mean and uh, as a nation and, and as a world what changes will come another question that's been on the minds and hearts of many of us is the black lives matter movements and um, what happened to George Floyd appears to have revealed some uh, significant flaws and fissures in our society, in our society in the West, perhaps across the whole world, in our political systems, um, in our social systems, the way that we relate, the way that we perceive, the way that we see. Big questions for us to address and not least for the church. Um, what does that mean for the church as well? Um, some of us ha have been um, very supportive of, uh, of all the actions that have been taken, even the illegal ones. Um, others of us have been, have been very concerned about the, um, about the threat which rallies and some of those social actions have meant not just for the breaking of law, um, but for the revision of history and, uh, and also for, for safety. Um, in terms of the spread of, of COVID-19. I don't know where you stand on that spectrum, but these are questions which many of us have been pondering and thinking about, and we all have our own ideas and thoughts about that. And this is, of course, linked to the whole question of COVID-19, because it seems to have been revealed in the wake of it. What do we do about such things? How, what kind of mind do we have on these things? informed by our faith in God and by scripture. Another issue that 
um, many of us have been concerned about for a long time is the environment. And um, one of the byproducts, weirdly, uh, ironically, of the of COVID-19 was that um, was that it was beneficial actually for for the wider environment. And now that societies are restarting, um, there are all sorts of worrying indicators that perhaps the environmental damage that that some of our uh, systems and economy um, will do to the environment are actually going to get worse and not better. What do we do about these worries, about these fears for the way we live? And what does it mean um, for, for ourselves as citizens? Um, many people are feeling that they do not trust their governments anymore here in the UK, in America and uh, in other places too. Um, what, what does that mean for us? What do we do with those sorts of feelings if we feel them? Um, others feel fiercely um, loyal to their governments um, here and in America and in other places too. How do we deal with that and how do we deal with the fact that other people might differ from us? And all these questions have been very much on my mind and certainly as I've come to the scriptures uh, for, uh, for today, for, for, for this Sunday, and um, it strikes me that the background for each of our scriptures, the Old Testament reading, the Epistle reading and the Gospel reading, all are situated in times where there are big questions and, and big threats, especially, especially, and this is what I want to say, especially the threats to faith. Um, in, the, in the Old Testament, um, we've got this very, very young Abrahamic faith. It's very, very new. And it's very, very vulnerable. It seems to be um, to be dependent upon Abraham and Sarah having a child, and there is no child. But also there is pressure from outside. There's Abraham and his household, which is quite big by this time. But they have the pressure of the surrounding society, which has very, very, very different moral values and aims than they do. And they're concerned about that. And then uh, in our in our New Testament, our epistle reading, uh, we have a very young church, um, again, pressured by the values and mores of the society in which it's situated and in which, in which uh, people, communities, individuals are being persecuted. There's suffering there, real suffering that people are experiencing. What does faith have to say about that? And then in our gospel reading, we have the very founding of our faith, the, the beginnings of its expansion from Jesus to his uh, first apostles, his, his first disciples who become his apostles in this reading, um, and beginning to spread out through, through communities. And again, there's threats there. There's threats from the, the, the rigid historical system of Judaism, which wants to control everything and won't open themselves up to fresh and new perspectives. And there's also um, poverty, uh, a beleaguered economy, which is the result uh, of, the, of the Roman occupation of Israel. People are suffering. They're suffering under the burdens of the Romans and also of this stultifying religious system and from poverty and illness. What, what will they do? What does faith have to say about that? As I thought about all these things and as I looked at the readings, it seemed to me that there were three themes running through all three readings, the same three themes. One is hospitality. It is fundamental to Abraham and Sarah's understanding of faith, of morality, that hospitality will be given to strangers. And, and in this particular instance, these are not, not any strangers. This is God. It is a theophany, a, an appearing of God uh, as a trinity. But Abraham and Sarah instinctively offer hospitality. That's what they do. They welcome. Now the Gospel reading takes that and gives it a twist. Here what's happening is that, is that the apostles, the newly appointed apostles, are going out to spread the, the word about Jesus. And just a little bit beyond our, our gospel reading, a, a few verses over, what we see is that they're meant to seek hospitality in the villages to which they go. If they are welcomed, they stay. If they are not welcomed, they're to shake the dust off their feet and, and move on. Here, what we see 
and this ties into the Abraham reading, is that God is always seeking a welcome. God cannot do what God will do. God cannot heal what God might want to heal if there is not a welcome from human beings as individuals, as communities, and as a society. And finally, in the New Testament reading, we see this message of hospitality as well, in that, in that it talks about the love of God which has been shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit which he has given to us. God gives his Holy Spirit to those hearts that are receptive and to those who have received him, he has come to make a home. He seeks hospitality in the very hearts of us. And the second theme which runs through all our readings is that of promise. In the Old Testament reading, the promise to Abraham and Sarah is that of a child. The continuing then of this, this newborn, not just newborn child, but the newborn faith, which has been revealed uniquely to Abraham and which now will continue and will mature in the world. In the Gospel reading, um, there, is, there is the promise of peace with God, of, of reconciliation with God. This is the truth about God which is spoken as it's revealed in Jesus Christ. Jesus comes to preach the kingdom of heaven and access to the kingdom of heaven for everyone. And finally, in the New Testament reading, um, again, it's, it's about peace. It's about the peace of God, promises of peace with God in any situation that will be in our hearts for all of us. The third theme which runs through all our readings is that of blessing. Abraham and Sarah receive the son that was promised. Their heritage is assured. Their faith will mature into the Abrahamic faiths, which are known throughout the world today. And in the Gospel reading, um, the, uh, the promise which is spoken of redemption with God in the Kingdom of Heaven coming is, is revealed right there in front of them as people are healed in extraordinary ways, not just by Jesus, but, but by his apostles acting in his name. And in the uh, Romans reading, the New Testament Romans reading, we have, we have the blessing of the transformation of suffering, quite extraordinarily, that the peace that is promised comes through faith and through the way that suffering um, produces endurance, which produces character, which produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us. This is a way of transforming our very experience of the very, very difficult things which we encounter every day in our world. Hospitality, promise and blessing. These three things seem to be the key markers or or attributes of the encounter between God and people that brings forth life. Hospitality, promise and blessing. And I want to ask you perhaps if you will with me ponder what these three things, these three attributes might mean to you in the reality of your life, your life's experiencing experiences and also the questions that you might have about about life here and, and now in our world. Hospitality, promise and blessing. Um, I want to take them in reverse order and I want to ask you at some point perhaps to pause the video and to think these things through if you're on your own to ponder them and maybe write something down. If you're with somebody else, perhaps you could discuss these questions. So, first of all, blessing. So, first of all, with blessing, let's think about the past. And I want to ask this question from history and from your personal experience. What blessings come? with faith in God, both as individuals and as a church community and as a society. Perhaps you might like to pause now and think about this.
So now let's think about promise and what that might mean for us. And I'd like to think about that in terms of the present. Um, in this present moment, with all that we face and all that we experience, with all that we fear and all that we hope for, all that we wonder about, what good news did you hear in today's scripture passages for you as an individual, for us as a church community, and for our society more widely? Again, I invite you to pause the video and, um, and ponder this, discuss it. And finally, the question of how it is that we receive God's blessing for ourselves, for our church community and for our society. We need God's blessing so, so very much. And so here I'm thinking uh, about the future and inviting you to do that with me. I want to ask this question, what practical steps might we take to make God welcome, both as individuals and as a church community and also as a society. Again, pause the video and think about this if you're on your own, discuss it if you're with somebody. Finally, a message of hope. Abraham and Sarah's fresh new faith did not founder among the surrounding nations that had such different values uh, to theirs. It went on to grow and to flourish and be fruitful in the world. And the new revelation of that faith in Jesus Christ, again, um, was not suppressed by the religious authorities or the state authorities um, of, of the Roman occupation. And the newly born church um, it was not destroyed by persecution, um, but it continued to grow and fill the world as it, as it does today. However, in amongst the reality of the blessing of God, in all of those three situations, there was also suffering. Suffering was involved in, in, the, very, in the very receiving and enacting of the blessing. And, and the testimony of those that that suffer with Christ is this. They have this sense that they are not alone in their suffering, that God is with them. They do not despair that, that, that sense that Christ is there in the power of the Spirit to comfort them and strengthen them and to support them in the midst of their sufferings. And this has been the testimony of Christians in difficult situations all down the ages. And so I want to finally say this, as we make a place of hospitality for God in our lives, as we receive his promises, then we will see his blessing. And part of that blessing will be the transformation of suffering to hope. And, and as we bring ourselves and our church and our society to God, seeking ways to create a place of hospitality for God, seeking ways to hear accurately his promises and to speak them to others and into our society. And uh, as we do this, we will see his blessing as we hope for it and pray for it. May you know God's blessing of peace this day. This week has been designated by the RSCM as Music Sunday. So what does that mean? In my RSCM pamphlet, it explains, it's an opportunity for all to come together to celebrate and to give thanks for the role of music in the life of the church and the way in which music is something that can draw church and community together. Back when this was published earlier this year, they hoped to see a number of activities to mark this occasion, um, such as extended services, afternoon teas, recitals to cake sales um, from sponsored hymn singing, 
of old favourites to learning new pieces. Well, alas, as we know, things have changed, so uh, one can only think about what might have been. However, we're going to have a piece this morning, which is a suitable piece for this occasion. It's called With a Voice of Singing, and it's by Martin Shaw. Shaw was pretty much exactly contemporary with Vaughan Williams. He was born three years later, so um, Vaughan Williams was born in 1872, Shaw was born in 1875, and they both lived until 1958. And a lot of Shaw's output was written around the 1920s, and this piece was written in 1923. It's gloriously positive, it's a great sing, it's wonderful to play on the organ. It's a piece which the choir learnt with me about a year or so ago, and we did it in a combined even song service. And it's really positive, joyful and uplifting, which is, I think, what we all need in these times. The performance I've chosen is from a Scottish parish church, and um, there may be some more, de some more details online about that. So let's hear it now with a voice of singing by Martin Shaw. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. 
On the third day he rose again in accordance with the Scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us pray. Lord, we pray for your church throughout the world. For Christians in Iraq, Iran, China, Afghanistan, all places where there is persecution. And help us to be a blessing in our homes, our neighbourhoods and our communities. Give us grace to witness to your truth, especially when challenged. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for wisdom for our Bishop Rose, as she seeks to lead us forward in these uncertain and troubled times. And Father John, as he guides and cares for us in Folkestone, Thank you for his innovative, imaginative and challenging services. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we pray for the World Health Organization and the United Nations as solutions are sought for an end to the dangers of COVID-19 and the problems and violence caused by prejudice and hatred. We pray for peace in Yemen, in Syria and other troubled spots in our world. Help us to remember that we all matter and that we can all make a difference. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We pray for guidance for our politicians in these difficult times, nationally and locally. Bless the work of the Rainbow Centre in Folkestone and all who receive their help. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. We know, Lord, we know that many brought their sick friends and relatives to you and you healed them. We pray for our friends and relatives who are ill, anxious, lonely, afraid. We pray too for those wrestling with addiction and suffering abuse. We pray especially for those who have asked for our prayers, Irene, Alan and Andrew Birch, Jean Anderson, Anne Jarrett, Sheila Blundell and Bix. Our prayer is for their healing and wholeness. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Lord, we pray for those who have died recently, especially those who died alone or unprepared. We remember our own departed loved ones and particularly Tony Fisher, whose year's mind called this week. Rest eternal grant unto them, O Lord. And, and let light perpetual them. shine upon them. Lord, hear us. Lord, graciously hear us. Joining our prayers with those of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St. Ianswith, and all the saints, we pray together. Merciful Father, accept, accept these prayers, prayers for the sake of your Son, Son our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to himself in one body by the cross. 
we worship together in his name and we receive his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this bread to set before you, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed, Blessed be, be God, God forever. forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. Through your goodness we have this wine to set before you, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become for us the cup of salvation. Blessed, Blessed be God, God forever. forever. The Lord is here. 
His Spirit is with us. Lift up your heart. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise. Through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living Word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit he took flesh, as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin, he lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit, and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ who in the same night that he was betrayed took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has, has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. Christ, Christ will come again. And so far the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people, and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread, and one cup, so that we, in the company of the Blessed Virgin Mary, St Ian's with and all the saints, may praise and glorify you for ever, through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom, and with whom, and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Let us pray with confidence as our Saviour has taught us. Our, our Father, Father, who art in heaven, heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, 
and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Body of Christ. The blood of Christ. The body of Christ. Amen. The blood of Christ. Amen. Eternal Father, we thank you for nourishing us with these heavenly gifts. May our communion strengthen us in faith, build us up in hope, and make us grow in love. For the sake of Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. So we pray together. Almighty God, we, we thank, thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen.
and now the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord.